Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today, new Star Wars Day. New Star Wars Day, everybody. Sorry, that came out a little bit Steel Saunders then. I was channeling, <laughs> ch- channeling um, Steel himself. Uh, the Acolyte has dropped um, today in Australia and everywhere in the world, but uh, this afternoon in Australia or this morning, so... We're here to to break these two first episodes down. So let's just bring in the deck tonight. Let's just get them on, and we can get cracking into this. We've got uh, stepping in. He was only here, you know, two weeks ago or a week or two ago. Matthew Turbo Thurbans back again. Hello, mate. How's it going? Welcome back to me. Um, I'm looking forward to talking about the acolyte. And you've got Love your it. lovely London exclusive Star Wars celebration beanie on as well. Yeah, the green one, uh, particularly for Ignite the Green tonight. <laughs> Look at that. Ignite the green, ignite the yellow, ignite the red. Ignore the... So, yes, Matthew Turbo Thurban and Catherine Daphne Neen uh, <laughs> joining <laughs> as well. Hi, Catherine. Welcome back. Hello. Yes. Uh, how long until I get to talk about Pip? Well, we can, we'll get there. We'll, we'll jump all through it. But... Um, yeah, it's been it's been a pretty interesting couple of days lead up. There's been a lot of people telling you what to think, telling you how good this thing is, telling you how bad this thing is, or how bad this thing is going to be, probably more precisely. Um, yeah, a lot of discourse, probably fever pitch discourse, really on these things. I didn't have to dip in too much, but it's definitely been floating around. But uh, everybody here's seen it. Um, we'll, we'll dig into it a little bit deeper, but let's just quickly. Turbo, did did you have a good time watching it? I had a great time. I watched it earlier than normal. Um, I watched it about 5 p.m., which was good. The kids were home from school and, um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, It's good to have new Star Wars that we know nothing about. That's all I can say. What did your son think about it? Just a a quick review, just a quick – was it Luke who – your your oldest? Yeah, Luke and Toby both both watched it. He's the High Republic Um, guy though, isn't he? Luke's the High Republic guy. Um, he, yeah, he really, really enjoyed it. Um, he loves that period as well. So he's pretty much addicted to the books, I think. Um, but in the end, he sort of realized that you don't need to know all about all the books and stuff. So, um, no, he really enjoyed it. Oh, excellent. And Catherine, you, uh, you finished up just before we started recording. I was getting the updates. You just kind of, you know, I was, I was doing the dishes and you just like, First episode's down, you know, ready, getting ready for the next one. And I'm like, yep, yep, we're all on track here. So you, you, it's probably freshest in your mind. Yeah, I was very happy, very excited. Uh, no lights were on when I was watching, so that's how Ooh. excited I was. Usually I have at least a lamp on in the room, so that's how dedicated I was. But, yeah, very, very happy. I Very um, happy. I watched it at lunchtime today as I work from home, so I watched it in my lunch break. And it's we're in winter in Melbourne, so it was about 13 degrees Celsius. It was cold. It was cloudy. It was miserable. So it was like pretty much the lights were off at my house. <laughs> I just had it on and I I'd sort of – it was funny because I – I think for a lot of Ahsoka, I think I just watched it on the iPad just in my study just at lunch and just sort of, you know, got through it. But I, my instinct was to do that again. I went, oh, hang on, there's nobody home. I can just, like, my lounge room is right there. It's lunch. It's quiet. I'll just – I'll put it on and I'll crank the sound and I'll I'll do the way do it the way Leslie Headland, Headland intended it. <laughs> and- Actually, I always watch new Star Wars with the lights off completely. Pull the blinds down, lights off, turn on the subwoofer and, you know – I don't have any complaints about the Bad Batch um, lighting at all. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I think pe- people are tending to watch it on many different devices and maybe they've got their brightness down or mm. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I, I found that the Acolyte in terms of just the cinematography and the, the lighting was really good. Like a good One of the things I saw, up. and I actually thought this myself, I think it was uh, Kyle Katarn on twitter who i don't think that's his real name but that's what he goes by um <laughs> he, he was asking about did it look did it look particularly grainy did it sort of have a film grainy kind of look to it and i thought it did like i kind of i watched it through my xbox uh which is 4k and i had sort of so i was doing the 4k thing on my tally and i was kind of looking going is this 4k this doesn't feel as sharp as stuff that i've watched here before it felt grainy but it maybe it just had a grainy 70s star warsy kind of a feel it was on it. definitely softer like there was no sharpness to it 
um, in a good way. I kind of, I kind of liked it. Sometimes the, the high resolution stuff can be too, you can sort of almost notice it's in a studio. Mm. Um, but I think this, this looked a lot better. This yeah, didn't this. feel digital at all, did it? It felt, it was quite no. funny because the people were like, oh, it, it's so prequel it feels like prequels. And I've been watching the prequels lately because uh, my daughters are watching them. Um, this does not look prequely. This looks, you know, this is trying to capture, a, I think, an earlier, a bit more down and dirty sort of Star Wars. No, Catherine, what, what do you reckon? I'm not one to comment on <laughs> All, all of those things because stuff that people says look really good, I'm like, I can't notice the difference. Like, honestly, <laughs> I don't know the difference between all the levels of, of stuff, so <laughs> don't ask me. As long as it plays, I'm just I'm just happy. I'm just happy that it's all working. Well, Josh and I both got glasses. Maybe that's the trick. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe I've just got, like, chicken grease on my glasses or something like that. <laughs> or I just, you know, I gave up kentucky fried chicken a year or two ago uh, you know for my health so it can't be that but um yeah i've, I've just i i had the, the episode title so th- this does have episode titles it, i was sort of going and going with are these going to have episode titles they're not actually in the in the episodes they don't drop during the episodes they don't sort of you don't have a little title card but they are um lost dash found and revenge dash justice so I think that's probably oh, slash. Slash, sorry, yes. Slash. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are they all going to be slashes? Who knows? Yeah. I've got a feeling that this is the vibe for the whole. It feels like it's a dichotomy as we've got into the themes of two sides of a thing and mm. two doodars. Um, Did you also notice they dyad. didn't dis- they didn't display the running time on the? Oh, I didn't look. I literally just pushed the button. I was like, "It's there." Don't yeah. don't read the synopsis. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> I've got another friend in the chat and he always asks me, what's the running time? What's the running time? I don't know. So he can plan his night around watching it, but there's no running time. So Matt yeah, I, mean, I guess you, the can, running you time. can press He's play a- and look at the bar and everything. But I think, I think it's probably good that they didn't show the running time. There's no expectations about when it's going to finish. Or- mm. Yeah, it wasn't on there when I watched. Um, and, yeah, I don't really look at the bar during. I, I know that I had asked Josh, oh, how long are the episodes? Because I wanted to give myself a rough time of when I had to start um, watching tonight. But um, I just had to guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which was nice, actually, because I, I, what would they end up being, what, sort of 42 and 38 or something like that, roughly? I don't, I, I don't know. But they were sort of, they were meaty. There wasn't like a 26-minute episode, episode or anything like that. But um, it, I mean, just generally speaking, I really... Like the design stuff, but the thing that really actually stood out to me a lot was, and something that they haven't really done on the TV that much, was real care to make it tie back to the original trilogy stuff. And just little things like the blue font text at the start. With the, the four dots at the end. Right. Did you all notice it was four dots? <laughs> like in the original um, scroll. I do now. But yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I, you know the, I, the color and the fonts, obviously, as well, the wipes. And even was the, the font the same? Um, I don't think the font was the same, but it, it felt like it belonged. It might, I think it was more like the credit font. I'd have to double check. But also another thing was the subtitles were very, yeah. they felt like the 80s. I don't know whether they changed. Maybe on, since they've gone digital and you get DVD subtitles and stuff, it's all different. But as far as what the subtitles, like when Jabba the Hutt would talk, you know, there will be no bargain. That is what the subtitles used to look like in my head. At least that's, I really went, yeah. oh, bam, that's the, that's that. <laughs> yeah, that was, that looked like yeah, the Return of the Jedi font um, of the subtitles. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, it, it I really in, enjoyed the, the setup for this. Um, I don't know whether it's worth sort of recapping the whole plot or anything like that, but it just sort of takes you right into it. You, you, we sort of start on a nice Star Warsy planner, and we we get Trinity Carrie Ann Moss's character. Um, the no, uh, Indira. 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 I've I've sort of feel like I've got a couple of the names here, and um, she eats it. At the start, did anybody see that coming? No. Yeah, like, no. Well, there right. you go. <laughs> I, I think there'd been some speculation. I think even on our speculation pod, we 
we wondered about that because some have been killing Jedi. Like someone had to go. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and having it being Carrie Ann Moss, you know, Trinity from the Matrix, it's a big deal. Like people obviously associate her with Trinity and know what a good fighter Trinity is. So they immediately go, okay, she's top level. May took her out. Or, mm. sorry, the unknown assassin at that point took her out that ups the assassin's threat level. But the way that um, she did it by threatening a, an instant standby. Yep, just the bar man. He's just there to yep. pour some drinks. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, and it was just curious because it was just just the tone. Like she literally went in to pick a fight. Like she kind of yep. just, like she, she didn't, you know, scope the place out. She, she didn't. She just kind of walked up and was like, "I'm here to, I'm here to kill you." Um, what do you think? All the turbo. What do you think the no weapons, like the inviting you to fight, kind of thing is all about? Like, is, is this part of the part of the ritual? Part of the part of the. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. One, one thing I will say is with the prediction, um, it came up in the Scruffy's podcast, their prediction episode, and someone said she either dies in the first or second episode. And I went, hang on, there could be something to that. So I had it in the back of my mind yep. uh, that it might happen. So I wasn't overly surprised. But, yeah, the, the weapons thing's interesting. Um, I guess we'll figure it out with yeah. the whole knives, the knives thing. Yeah. Um, and then has she sort of – she the, the couple of times – we'll jump all over the place. You know, obviously you listen, you've seen this. But it was, you know, when she fought Master Soul and her – when the lightsaber sort of came out, you know, she there was a whole thing of like she's looking at it, like she sort of had this sort of fascination. There was a real focus of this that the, the lightsaber for a second was either there to grab or they hadn't used it yet, or it was quite interesting that um, she was sort of keeping an eye on it. Whether it was just like I'm just going to find out when they're going to pull it out because then they're going to get serious. Like currently they're just sort of ducking and weaving. Um, but mm, interesting. Mystery yeah. upon mystery. Well, I thought um, during the Indira fight when the lightsaber was on the ground, you know, after Indira died, I thought May sort of looked at the lightsaber for a long time. So I half expected her to, you know, force pull the lightsaber to then, um, you know, get the kyber crystal and bleed it because... I think in current canon, um, Sith the way Sith get kyber crystals is to take it off a Jedi and then turn the mm. the crystal red through bleeding it. It might just be a like one down, three, you know, three to go. Then I'll get that light. You know, then I'm going to get that. Then I'm allowed to have a lightsaber. Part of this is like you're not allowed to have it or touch it until you've you've finished the job. And I think we'll see. Uh, well, it seems, you know, well, it, we, we kind of know that there's four Jedi that she's particularly after. It's got something to do with what's happened to her family, uh, May and um, what's her, what's the sister's name? Sorry. O, 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 Osha. 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 Something to do with their planet. Um, so I feel like there might be a flashback or we'll get some, a better, you know, I don't. I think we'll see Carrie Ann Moss again. Whether it'll just be in a flashback, obviously she, she's she's dead. <laughs> she kind of uh, she took. Well, it's nice that you know, one one blow is enough to do it. So in Star Wars, sometimes it takes a few. Um, yeah, I do think that there will be flashbacks, especially to that event with the um, the family dying mm. or that that particular event. So I think the flashbacks will happen. And I think one of my theories, and and I think I, I more than a theory, I saw a reference to. Uh, Leslie, Head Leslie Headland saying that um, she was uh, interested in Rashomon. So the whole, you know, one event retold or perceived by different people. Yeah. So I kind of think we're going to get sort of multiple flashbacks to that event and there's going to be different sides of the story there. Yeah. Well, and then you think about the episode titles, they are different sides of something itself. So you think that trend's got to continue mm -hmm. that we're going to have different different sides. Yeah, and it's quite it's quite funny because it's um, you know, uh, May in May's case actually, you know, she's on this mission, she's determined to kill these Jedi. She's got a master who looks 
pretty shady, looks pretty dark side, pretty you know, ready to mess stuff up. But you know, she's not overly like you know, she's determined, but she's not like she's gone through. Like, she's not like Anakin Skywalker fallen to the dark side, got the crazy eyes or anything. You know, she's kind of having regular conversations and kind of kicking her. Like she doesn't look like she's completely consumed by evil. She just sort of looks like she's kind of on a mission. Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's very easy to, you know, Star Wars does a pretty good way of going like, hey, you know, this person's bad. But, I mean, someone like Count Dooku, I guess, kind of kept it together most of the time and sort of showed his hand when he needed to. But, you know, like obviously you'd spot Darth Maul a mile away. Um, it's quite, it's just quite, you know, we have this sort of idea of like the Sith are always just like, Aah! and she's just a bit sort of, you know, just here to do business. I mean, I I find it interesting how it's going to pan out. I guess we'll talk about it later, but the – She's already killed two of the four, right? And they're ready to go to see Kalnaka or mm-hmm. you know, the Wookiee Wookie Jedi. And it seems to be progressing really at a fast it's pace. I kind of like that. It's clip, just, isn't it? It's moving really fast. Because you kind of feel like, oh, you know, this whole, just the whole fact that there were two of them could have been the episode seven that is revealed, you know, and then. Um, uh, over or over, sorry, I'm going to get this kept wrong, keep getting this wrong. Osha. Osha. Osha could have been on the run for six episodes. You know what I mean? Like that could have just been the whole thing and they're just hunting her down. Yeah, like the fugitive kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, and it could have just gone cool. on and on and on and on and on and on. And it just sort of within, <laughs> you know, we talked about this last week uh, when Andy Bell was on and he was saying he saw that clip where she was sort of proclaiming her innocence and he's going, oh, you know, she seems like she, you know, she seems like she's pretty. And it's not even a an issue. Like they sort of cut to. Even when they cut to after the uh, first scene and she's in the spaceship and she's just sort of joking around, you're kind of going, oh, something's up here. Like, if we jump back in time a really long time before somebody's hurt her or... But they, it all kind of resolved itself really quickly and, and, and moved on to the next thing. Yeah, I think um, Leslie's sort of said that every episode is going to move to another sort of unravel another secret. So I, I really like the pace of this. It's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Um yeah, definitely I'm glad that at least that sort of question was answered you know, very swiftly and it wasn't really like a big mystery in some ways. It was as soon as they sort of talked about, you know, family death, sister death, it's like, okay, yep. There we go. That's the answer. Yeah, and, and they actually believed it, and they're like, "Yep." Yeah. It was it was it was even refreshing when um, Master Soul's bit kind of like, "Oh, look, you know, we've found out that she's got a sister," and then she's like, "Yep, I I agree. You can bring her along." Like it's like, "Oh, okay, we're not laboring on this stuff that mm-hmm. could have just been like laboured over and laboured over and laboured over. This thing's just moving at a clip, which makes me feel like we'll be looking back at these episodes in a few weeks, going, "We had no idea." You know, this this <laughs> yeah. was just the this was just the start of this small thing, and I think that we're really just stepping into this. Like, I think that the, even the impetus for this, which is the Bay hunting these four Jedi, this is just the start. Like, this, that could be... They could all be dead by the next episode or the next two episodes <laughs> but, or, or whatever it is. Like, it's quite... Ah, um, oh, they better not kill the Wookiee. They'll, <laughs> they'll be hell to pay. <laughs> <laughs> the poor old Wookiee. Um, so... Yeah, and then we, we, we sort of... We go to the Jedi Temple. It was nice to go back to the Jedi Temple in its glory. Looking real. <laughs> Everything kind of just looks real now. Yeah. Yeah. Still no, um, still no sign of Yoda. Um, everyone seemed to predict that he was going to show up, but um, no, you saw the younglings there mm. look, meditating. I'm, I'm not saying he's not going to show up, but I'm glad that he wasn't front-loaded in a way, that it, the characters are allowed to breathe without... Um, the lazy characters being there, that we're allowed to meet Soul and Fenestra and um, Yord. Yord. And we got to we got to talk some Yord soon. Yord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and <laughs> you know what? Let's... Stephanie Keane's character's name of all the ones. Jack Inta, I've just Inta? No, ja... I've got. Sorry, it's it starts with K. Um... I had it. I've, I brought it up right in front of me. Um, Jackie Lon. Okay. Jackie Lon. All right. Oh, Jackie. And yep. she was Jackie. good. She started a bit sort of like. I mean, she's 
you know, started not so much stiff, but, you know, she was sort of just following the rules. But I, I did like how her personality sort of shot through um, later on in, in the thing. And we'll get to her in a sec. But let's talk a bit of Yord here. I mean, <laughs> let's let's give a shout out to the doofuses who just keep trying. Like, it's pretty clear that this bloke <laughs> this bloke has kind of got the skills, but it does it's not coming naturally. And he's just kind of worked hard. And done. The, he's 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 just he's just a study buddy. He's he, he's just. If I just keep working at this and I study and I do everything right, eventually I'll get through. And that and that's kind of what he's done done by the book. Um, yeah, he wants to get a HD in his exam in his Jedi exams. He wants a gold star, but it's not coming natural. <laughs> There's no natural talent here. We're not talking. You know, he's not a Mark War. He's a Steve War. Um, you probably understand <laughs> that analogy, guys. He's not the he's not this natural, but he's just getting through with grit. Um, and just hard work here. I don't know about the hair, though. The hair is very different to a Steve Waugh haircut. Yeah, that is. I don't think you'd catch Steve Waugh with that haircut. <laughs> Ponting. <laughs> Ponting. Or with his shirt off, either. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, 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 so we were seeing him just taking the shirt off, one for the one for everybody who's into that. Um, was, he, was he ironing his Jedi outfit at that point? Because it looked like he had like a... some steam, a steamer or something. Yeah, I thought yeah. he was like... I'm yeah. like I've gone... Oh, that's kind of cute. They have to iron their own outfits because everything is so tailored in this. Like the outfits are so, I don't know. Like I, I think, I feel like they feel kind of goofy, but I get why they are that they are. But it, I just like the idea that he's just there pressing his uniform. It, it's a real like kind of Arnold Rimmer kind of thing yeah. almost to do. Like it's a- the, out, the outfits are closer to how they are described in the High Republic books and what we see on, like, the High Republic covers mm. and the the few sort of comics I've read um, where with the, you know, very white robe but, you know, lots of folds, the, the belts and the gold. That's all belts. part of, you know, how the Jedi dress during, um, yeah, the High Republic. But they do actually change. I just sort of noticed that... Like Master Soul changes when he goes on the mission, but it's pretty yeah. much just as ornate as the one he had before. You know what I mean? Like it's not like it's he's gone into a bit more rough and tumble. But your the thing as I loved about um about Yord is you know that actor, you know, a bunch of knobs on the internet made fun of him because he got Anakin and Luke mixed up in an interview, um, in the promotion stuff. But I've gone. That's classic Yord. We're just he's just yording it up for the people. Like he's going, Oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you that's exactly what he's just doing his best. He's not quite getting it right. That's just a that's just hundred percent classic Yord. Like let him let him be. And I think the Yord horde, hashtag Yord horde has already taken off. Um so it's it's cool. I'm enjoying it. And again, I'm not trusting anything these characters at face value at the moment. I feel like they could really go anywhere. Um But uh we should double back, Catherine. You wanted to talk about Pip. I know you love a good droid. And he's the best droid. He's a very good droid. He's a good little worker, that droid. He's just like he's a little pocket rocket, literally. What does Pip stand for? Is there is it a droid name? Like, is it... Oh, I don't know. Po- pocket something? <laughs> I don't know, but everything. Like, yeah, the Swiss Army knife of droids, just absolutely... Every little attachment you could possibly want, either in a fire extinguisher, <laughs> and delightful little beeps, and and gorgeous little eyes, and I would die for Pip. And if anything happens to Pip, there will be hell to pay. And why isn't Pip available in like get Batu right now to buy for all those people at Disneyland? Like. Get me a peep. I right did love now that, that um, Hasbro today announced some Mandalorian figures. <laughs> the day that the Acolyte <laughs> came out, I'm like, oh my god, Hasbro, why do you do it to yourself every time? Seriously, like, I mean, I mean, I've already got my own pip. That's my wife's name. Oh, of so. course, yeah. yeah. Just like, hey man, I've been big on pip for 20 years, so I don't know what everybody else is talking about. It has been 20 years, actually. Has it? And happy birthday to Pip, too. I know it was Pip's birthday the other night. Yeah, yeah. 20 years in October. Oh, this October. Look at that. Lovely. Um, so, yeah, I know we're jumping all around the place, but it was kind of just, you know, they brought her in. She got arrested. Um, um, Osha gets arrested. She gets taken in the ship. She gets taken the, the the crazy prison ship where it's all happening. There's no, there's a couple of droids, garden stuff, and then the, and the chairs are flying the plane. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> awesome! Do you think all the chairs are like that? Do you think the toilets like that? Like you sit at the toilet, and then these, like, you know, some arms come out, and 
hope not. That was pretty amazing. The, just the fact that those chairs are droids, pilot chair droids. Oh, they got to have a name really, too, doesn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. And um, well, we didn't touch on uh, New Mordians as well from Phantom Menace. We uh, are back. I haven't seen. Oh that yeah, for a one while. of them looked like um, the main one looked like he was a pirate Nemordian. If he had some sort of pirate outfit, that's what it looked like to me. And his hat was a bit different. Yeah, they yeah. Ac- turned the accents down too as well, which was quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so quite glad about that. Um, but it was interesting that on yeah the Trade Federation ship they had humans doing the outside work for repairing and there was comments made by yeah Yord when he boarded the ship that you know by Republic law uh, droids should be doing that mm. um, it's too dangerous so obviously the humans are cheaper yeah well it's probably cheaper to replace a human you know than it is to replace a droid so yeah so it's quite interesting we sort of catch up with Osher and and, um, yeah, she's basically, she's left the order six years ago. So I was kind of doing the math in my head because they sort of said that Master Soul mentions earlier that they brought her in 16 years ago or something. So yeah, then she's... When she was eight. Yep. Yeah, so that means she was 18 when she left and she's like 24, 25 now or whatever, mm. which sort of checks out. And, yeah, she walked away from the order. They didn't really give go into detail why exactly, but... Um, it's kind of funny like that. I, I I mean, I guess Jedi leaving the Order isn't super common, but I guess it is. She kind of goes, well, yeah, I didn't really have any transferable skills. It's kind of like being an elite sports person sometimes. You know, and they kind of, yeah. they, they, once they if they do their knee or something, it's like, oh, I've gone out to the real world and I don't actually have any real life skills. I've been in the system. I've been in the train, you know, I've been in the system my yeah, whole there's life. Yeah, no, there's no Jedi punditry or anything or commentary they, yeah. can, <laughs> they can do. Well, she, it's, she's like an academy player, you know. I came through the academy. I was really I was up there for a while and I did my knee and then I just kind of got put out to pasture and now I'm yeah. stacking shelves or fixing ships. It's interesting during the High Republic era, um, you know, Jedi or trained Jedi do have that choice, you know, to keep following the path. Or there's a couple of other paths out there for them, or they can choose to leave the order. It wasn't something that was you know, like a big, a, I mean, it was a big deal, but it wasn't such a big, no, no, it was allowed to walk all, like, away from the order. Mm. Um, you know, There's also like flunk outs as well. I mean, they'd have people who yeah. would just flunk and, you know, they'd become guards or whatever else. I mean, maybe it was a like a numbers game that maybe in this era, I haven't read The High Republic, but maybe there's a whole lot of Jedi, like the numbers are, Big, so that it doesn't really matter if someone leaves. If you know well, I mean. yeah, I think that's probably yeah. that they're just like, oh, okay, you know. And then the, the galaxy is kind of seems to be generally in peace. They're just like, well, we don't seem to have any trouble with anybody who leaves. They just get on with their lives, and eventually, they their connection drops off. And I mean, I'm sure for a while they're probably keeping an eye on it, but it seems that they just, you know, they move on to the next one. Like you said, it's just like, well, we've got a whole room of kids ready to go here. So, um, and I got the impression I could be wrong, but that there were some kind of trials or she was going to go for the trials to become a knight and didn't succeed. Um, and it was this, you know, hanging on or something, the attachment to her her past and that was part of it. Yeah. Like it was a, a choice to walk away but also maybe she failed at the trial so it was like a, a mutual agreement almost. Yeah, yeah. Well, they kind of make a point at like your – kind of eventually got there as well you know like it seemed like he was he was seen to be struggling as well but i think just because he wasn't as talented <laughs> you know like i said he was again he was just getting by oh. he was getting by on grit and kind of got got through it but i don't maybe it's implied that he's not as he wasn't as sort of naturally gifted as some other people but Bless you're. Good old, oh, you're, it's a great Bless character you're. but i like i like the idea of that of just like you don't have to be the you don't have to be the a student i guess it's kind of like sabine you, you, you can you can get through uh, and in the case of this, where the Jedi are thriving turbo, like you said, like they can probably lift up the. Yeah, yeah. Back, well, I think that back to the um, the younglings, that scene where they're talking about what do you feel? I think there was like, yeah. I feel peace and all mm. that sort of thing. Yeah. That girl that said, what did she say? That was like, everything's on fire. Oh, I see fire. Know. Well, I thought that was a flashback to her. That, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, they're yeah, coming like, oh, someone's been killed. I'm like, oh, I guess we're not in a flashback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm glad I wasn't the only one who thought that because I, I was thinking, yeah, flashback scene. And 
Yeah. Classic misdirections. Well, I mean, we haven't really... We've kind of dropped his name a few times. We haven't spoken particularly about Master Soul, but what a good character. I yeah. really... He's, yeah. um, you know, Lee jung Jae is doing a... He's got the gravitas. He's kind of got the... You know, for a bloke who's... English isn't for his first language as well. Like, it's so... He's really kind of carrying that... Showing how much he cares about his students as well like his current student and his former students and stuff it's really showing some a lot of empathy that you probably don't get from jedi at least not the ones that we're used to yeah and i also yeah. thought you know he pushed back a bit against like the council and the dogma and the um, bureaucracy that has crept in you know that um Vanestra was sort of talking about you could almost you could sense his frustration from the tv screen of you know no like well her first thing is just like we can't like this is bad pr basically that was literally like she was going like the the optics on this are really bad like we've got to we've got to solve this in-house and off and arrest this chick or and or off her so people our enemies whoever that is don't find out what's going on so it was quite interesting that they were um little insular in there didn't seem to love that yeah. It just did a yeah, really was... good job of just giving you a really good sense of what's going on without labouring it. Like the, it just, and I don't know whether yeah, that's because you've the got exposition a, was really quick. I think and that, fast is that and... just because you've got a writers' room of people, and you've got enough voices in there that are just kind of like, hey, you need to explain these things, but we don't need to over-explain it. We don't need to, you know, ma- Soka made so many assumptions that people should know stuff. But also felt like it over explained everything at the same time, which is kind of the worst because you're kind of doing both. This is just <laughs> somehow managing to just walk the tightrope perfectly of kind of going, telling me everything I need to know without feeling I'm getting bogged down, but at the same time moving at a clip. Um, and there were no, at least in dialogue, there was no Star Wars references. Oh, except I think for apart, apart from I have a bad, bad feeling, feeling about, about this. this. Yeah. yeah, that was the only one. And again, that threw me off because, I mean, you do expect it in in Star Wars, but again, it was going so well and I thought, oh, they said it. They just had to say it. <laughs> of course Yord has got a bad feeling about this. But he studied it and he knew that that was a Star Wars thing and he should put it in because he's done his due diligence. It was in his textbooks. Yeah, because he's in his little, like, must say, you know, put in Star Wars reference. Like, he, he knows. So, you know, Yord gets a pass. <laughs> <laughs> um, where else? What else are we? I'm just trying to think. So, yeah. I'd- Oh, we're up to the prison prison ship, I think. Those oh God, are we only prisoners. there? Yeah. I feel like we're jumping all over the place, but yeah. yeah so, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that oh, was cool too. I forget, what about the face hugger? I love the face hugger. Oh, for that, the, that that criminal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. <laughs> he absolutely sold her out as well. Just, I was waiting for those escape pods to just smash into a like into an yep. asteroid or something like that. But I did like the idea that they all just got picked up. You know, the Jedi just picked yeah. them up. And put, so they're all just in the, you know, they're in the cell and stuff and things like that. I thought that was quite cool. Yeah, yeah. That was a great look. And pretty sneaky, you know, not, pretty sneaky prison escape. And there were some pretty wild looking characters in there. Like there was a guy that looked a bit like a low, half low, but half like. Oh, the, the creature design was fantastic. Yeah. yeah and, and stuff you've never seen before too. I love seeing this new design. Well, I didn't see many previous ones at all i'd have to go back and i'm sure maybe you go in the background and you're like oh there's a greedo with the background the background or whatever or whatever a rodian or whatever he's really called but it was all really cool interesting creatures and felt star everything felt star wars you had those little weird star warsy moments and it all just kind of yeah. worked really i think that was just testament to the design and you can see the the money's on the screen you know saying this thing's quite expensive yeah. but the money's on the screen um definitely so yeah we hit the we hit the prison break she goes down with the ship and she starts having these visions and that's kind of where they reveal the sister thing so she yeah i I, was it like the force cave sort of thing what's going on with that is that someone reaching out is that the sister reaching out the force to her i I think it's a a dream um where osha's thinking about may like it's it's surfacing in her brain well both of them assume um, that each other one's dead as well which is the yeah. interesting thing so they were both surprised to find out the other one was alive so it wasn't like her brain instantly went oh 
well, it's got to be my sister because she looks just like me. Yeah, that yeah, that's intriguing. To f- they they both think each other's dead. So, what does that mean for the actual event? I guess we'll find out what actually happened or what people believe. Happened. Well, that was just why when From the the she has the vision or whatever, and she sees the you know the other girl or the other her twin when they're younger. That's why I was surprised because it feels like that was where her brain would go. You know, it was almost like she was, oh, well, I'm reconnecting with that. But, yeah, it seemed like she was just as surprised as anyone, whether she just thought she was looking. It's funny because she just assumes she's looking at herself, but she's not looking at herself. She's looking at wasn't, her sister. Wasn't there also, you know, I've, to, I've only seen it once, but wasn't there like a double dream, a dream, like an inception type thing? Because she was, she was asleep in the cave, wasn't she? Maybe, well, maybe I got no. this wrong. She kind of wakes up suddenly in the at the start. I'm mm. just trying to remember, yeah. but she kind of goes to the cave and they go to an cause no no because she goes to almost like a a room and then they go to like the burning like planet, which I assume is yeah. where it all went down. So whatever those four Jedi did to stuff them over, whatever it is, we can only speculate whether it's they caused the fire they took the daughter and left the other one behind and that's where the resentment comes from or they she, they think she killed their parents or whatever whatever it is but um i mean the thing is when she she confronts the second jedi the bloke with the who looks like he's got the worst stick on beard since general maydean yes. <laughs> yes it was terrible but that what? was obi-wan attack of the clones you and beard oh and, my god and the hair and the and the i i I don't know. I have a feeling that maybe it was his real beard, and it just somebody said that he was from Game of Thrones. He is one of the Baratheons from Game of Thrones, apparently that actor. Mm. But I have to double check. But you know, when she kind of got through his force bubble and had the poison, and and kind of was like, "Hey, you know what you did?" <laughs> it well, it seemed on, like it was like pretty bad. <laughs> but he's also been for ten years. He's not been well. Hang on, they said he wasn't didn't talk. He hadn't for 10 spoken years. for ten yeah. years. Yeah, whether he's been floating for ten years or not. Yeah, man. I was going to say if he was floating for ten years, like yeah, has he go to the gonna bathroom? Do, is he's going to trim the beard? You know. Yeah. Is, <laughs> like, that the, is that the trick? Is the trick not? He's not actually floating. He's actually just hiding the pile of poo that he's sitting on. That's actually the <laughs> trick. <laughs> just like I don't know. Visuals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> It's like, oh, wow! What amazing ability! It's like he doesn't know how to float. He's just—he's just really good at you know, positioning mirrors. Um, so yeah, that was that was weird. Now apparently, somebody in, in online said that that's a reference to something in the High Republic. It's some kind of thing that Jedi, some Jedi have done in the High Republic. I didn't know what it was, but I'll have to. Maybe you could ask Luke that or something. He might know what, more about it. Turbo, if yeah. he knows a bit more about the High Republic, but. It did seem like she just kind of went, "Hey, man, you know what you did. Now you got to drink this poison and atone." Yeah, it's all very intriguing. It is very. Did anybody it has else my attention. think that the, uh, the like the outpost Jedi Temple was a bit shit? Like yeah, just it as was, far yeah. as like they just, uh, it's just not that special to have a Jedi Temple. Maybe I'm just used to. I mean, they had security, but you know. Yeah. But even just the, you know, like the, you always think of the, you know, the Coruscant Temple, which is very ornate. And then even in expanded media, say you play video games and things, and it's always like, well, you usually coming at the end of the Jedi or you're finding a lost Jedi Temple, say in like Jedi Survivor or something. But it's all very ornate and it's very, you know, there's statues and all this sort of crazy architecture. This just kind of just looked like, you know, a warehouse sort of yeah. <laughs> it was just the it's back like water. It's just a, an outpost not a temple you know yeah it was just kind of like they've been stationed at the the, the local and, country police station or something yeah and it had a basement you know they're, they're just yeah the mount thomas of um <laughs> yeah, yeah that's jedi right outpost. that's right and this is where all the all the all the most jedi all the most jedi die um we should yeah. touch on um manny jacinto's character Quamia, who was the sort of slightly shady, shady dude who was dealing out the poison and working with May, um, great character, great, such a good actor, like yeah, yeah, very got a good roguish vibe going on, um, a good long fringe, 
Yeah, he's got a proper emo fringe going on there. (laughs) (laughs) Back with turbo early 90s fringe, probably. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. (laughs) All he needed was an undercut, you know. Yeah, (laughs) an undercut and a Joy Division t-shirt. And uh, (laughs) so, yeah, look, I I think there's more going on than he's letting on for this character. Um, And um, something that was in the shop, I don't know if you noticed it, but there was like this big jar on the side with like things that looked like almost fingers or it was like a floating thing. It reminded me of something that I've watched in – because, yeah, in the last few days I've watched um, like two four-hour videos about um, the Galactic Star Cruiser and in one of them it showed a lot about the bar and in the bar on the Star Cruiser had, you know, a big jar with, yeah, like these tentacle thingies and, and you know, supposedly one of the drinks needed that. Okay. that I've, I've described it really well, but, yeah. <laughs> well, it Maybe wasn't his shop, though, it. was it? So <laughs> it wasn't – I've just I did a quick look on the guy who played the dude with the terrible beard. Yeah. Dean Charles Chapman. So we've got, we got a Neen and a Chapman or, you know, close enough. So he was uh, – um, Tom and Baratheon in Game of Thrones. Mm. So that was oh. one of the sons? That was one of Jamie and Cersei's sons? Yes, yes. So he was the Tom one who took was... over from... He's the one who took yeah. over from the shithead one. Yeah, so there were a couple of Tomans because um, the actors kept ageing. Um, yeah, so he was the third child, but yeah, the, the second son. I'm just trying to find his date of birth here to see if he's old enough to have grown a beard. 26. Okay, you would he think... didn't grow that beard. <laughs> that... <laughs> it's a terrible beard, isn't it? I've got to I've got to go back and have a look, but it it yeah, it was a shocker. But he also had like a bit of a receding hairline as he well. He did. He was a little he had a little bit of he was a little bit thin on top, wasn't he? Yeah. Cuz he's you sort of think about the age of Master Soul and Master Indira and you can yeah, well I kind of go back, back 20 up? years yeah. and go yeah, that doesn't add up. Like if he if must he's... be a very a youngling or just a Padawan, or yeah. I mean, obviously, he's, I mean, he's obviously trying to play a little bit older with the beard and stuff. But yeah, yeah. It was a little bit. Oh, and we should shout out <laughs> another character I really liked, and I don't know his name. He was the the husky Padawan from that planet. <laughs> Shall oh, we yes. say? <laughs> I was a big yes. fan of him. And it's nice yeah. that you know, the husky the husky boys have got a have got a cosplayer apart from you know Paz Vizsla or whatever now that they can they, they can do at celebration. The very easily distracted um, Padawan. Yeah, and I kind of like that. That they're, they're not all perfect. They're, some yeah. of them are kind of not dumbasses, but it the ability to use the force doesn't instantly just make you good at everything. It kind of just. You know, you've got to work at it and you're going to get things wrong. And I, I, I kind of really like that. And it, it, it's sort of playing into that quite quite well. I really I really enjoy that. But what do we think of this shady character? There's, I think he said something along the lines of... Um, he seems to know quite a lot lie. for a dude who's... I think he said peace is a lie. Mm. Yeah. And that was like, yeah, okay, something's going on here. And the um, other thing he... When, when they got... Um, her was it Osha to go into the shop. And that was their plan to, yeah, to go into yeah. the shop and pretend yeah. you know she he was she was May. He sort of went along with it too easily. He did give he, up information he, though. He kind he, of he did give up information, but it was like he knew from the start. Yeah, like it was very awkward. It was an awkward conversation. Yeah, yeah. She didn't do us help many favors too. She kind of she was a bit deer in the headlights going hi. on as well. Yeah, I know. She oh, was just hello. like, oh, man, you are not <laughs> selling this. Yeah, hi. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, look, I, I, you know, you can kind of go, do you put two and two together and say he's the bloke in the mask and he's just sort of pulling the strings and he's hiding in plain sight? Maybe, who knows? But, again, it wouldn't put me past, let, put Leslie Headland past it to make you think that for a bit and then he gets a lightsaber in the back or something, you know. Um, we do see Mr... Potentially, who's the bad guy here from a distance? The voice is interesting, isn't it? It kind of feels. It feels it very kind of, Kylo. Because very American yeah. as well. Like he's. I've never heard a Sith sort of thing have such. It almost felt like a real sort of 
I don't know, American accent. Like he wasn't sort of, if, I know James L. Jones and, and you know, um, Adam Driver are American. They speak with American accents. But this just felt more American, maybe because it was a big yeah. robot, but not fully robot. But I think James L. Jones and um, their voices of well, accents are very neutral. So, you know, yeah. There's, yeah. there's certain Americans that have a very neutral accent. I'm mean, not talking like, same goes for Australians, like Yol or anything like that, but it's still kind the same of... goes for Australians. There can be Australians with a thick Aussie accent and others that are very neutral. Yeah. Accent. Like your accent turbo. If I hear you on scruffies, <laughs> like I've heard, you know, when you sent your voicemail in the other day, I, you know, sent, you, <laughs> that was you reading that out, wasn't it? <laughs> that, that sounded yeah, that like the, the Monty Python doing the Bruce's. That was basically what that, I think that's yeah, the, the Bruce. That's, yeah, that was Bruce. every um, <laughs> reference point for British people doing Australian accents. <laughs> um, actually, I should just give a little shout out to another content creator. I think Catherine, you've been on a stream with her. I've forgotten her real name, the Ray side. Um, yes. I just yes. dipped in on her. She was doing a live stream just before the show started, and she completely greened her face up and did every like and got in costume and did everything in the lead up for the stream thing. I caught it. I thought that was commitment. So I, little, I caught a bit of that. So that there's commitment right there. I didn't do anything like that. I also found out she's a Central Coast Mariners fan, and she was at the the final last week where I was. So we followed the same team. There you go. Well, hopefully we'll all we'll catch up for a um, drink at celebration if she's there. But um, I digress. So. Yeah, I mean, they kind of spring the trap to um, to get bring Osher out into the into the into the wild. And the thing is, also, well, he does give her up as well, or does give up all the information about her, which kind of seems a bit weird that you he would just do that. Gives up enough information that it would seem like he's giving up information, but really, he didn't give up a lot. He told him when to come back to get her, though. So. <laughs> that, that felt he, like it he was a said lot. she'll be back for her stuff but he didn't give up you know really her motivation um you know he filled in the blanks of you know yes the stuff that they already knew that it was may you know, yep but, but he didn't sort of say anything about you know the master the overall plan you know why she wanted to kill him she he was like Right, I have to give up something. Yep. I'm giving this up and I'm just hoping she's good enough to get out of it. Um and and also he's providing her with an opportunity to kill Sol. And then we get the face the 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 the, the smackdown. And again, no weapons. You know, she kind of has the knives, but she's still waiting for her to, you know, come still waiting for him to come at her as well it, it's it's um yeah I'm, I'm sure there's a reason and they've already sort of spoken and it's kind of good because the questions that we have have kind of acknowledged as well it is weird it's like no she's you know what is she doing it this way for um, so maybe it's i don't know maybe an acolyte is more of a follower right is that is that the so That's... i was thinking maybe you know if there is a if there are two sith um master and apprentice and maybe she's the acolyte and she wants to maybe there's some rule in the sith that the the acolyte or the follower cannot use a lightsaber or, or anything yeah at all yeah oh yeah i i you know i she i don't think she's the apprentice <clears throat> you know out of the two she's no no she's no, the no. wannabe but the, the, there might be some you know new sith rule or something that's yeah yeah, yeah yeah that's right well it's quite you a, to it's prove kind yourself of, without weapons first. it's kind of nice it's a it's a it's a clever way to kind of have your cake and eat it too isn't it because it's not the master and apprentice it's the it's the wannabe it's the 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 person who's kind of striving for that power or whatever it is and she obviously she's got a motive it's interesting because you know she's got a very specific motivation like her motivation is i want to off these particular jedi because i've been wronged so does that motivation still stand once she's done that does, does she have enough hate in her heart to <laughs> to carry the flame after it's done or is she more just like hey i just this is a means to an end. You know, you're showing me the abilities in order to get what I want. And once that's done, maybe she doesn't want to do it anymore. Maybe it's just like, I'm done from here or yeah, there's more, there's more to this. This has got some, this has got some meat. We got to get, got to get into. I'm, I'm just having a thought as we're talking about that Star Wars visions episode. One of the, the first ones of the second batch um the the 
I want to say banshee one. The one in the cave? You know, where, yeah, where they, the, those kids escape and that one kid goes and, yeah, in the cave and is quote unquote rescued and it's obviously by a dark side user. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, then she gets taken away and it's like, yeah, is that something that happened to May, like after this fire? Now, did you notice that they said the fire your sister started um, and did this dark side user somehow rescue May from some situation? Mm. But And also, like, what are all these Jedi doing there for a start? Are they? Is it just local trouble that they're investigating? Is it something more? Have they come specifically looking for these sisters, these four sensitive sisters? It's um, yeah. It's it's there's some there's some things to dig into here. It it's given you just enough, and like we said, like you said before, Turbo, it's kind of it's giving it's setting stuff up, resolving it quickly, moving on, but the the. The bigger thrust is still sort of like running along pretty. Yeah, I got no idea where it's going. <laughs> no well, idea. we go to, we go check in with Mr. Wookiee Jedi, Kanako himself. He's just living his best best life out in the out in the woods. Yeah, what were those? Um, Those two guys were just junk traders looking for junk, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I think it was just a means to sort of, I don't know, introduce him, yeah. I suppose. Um, but it looks like he's um, he lives by himself. He's got a bit of a hermit lifestyle, the, the old Wookiee. Yeah. Did anybody else, and I, I saw this um, one or two people say, did anybody think that ended really weirdly, that episode? <laughs> like he kind of just walked into the, like it wasn't like a stern, it just sort of, he just kind of wandered into his oh, yeah. house and closed it, the door. Like I was kind of going, you know, if it had been that you'd pull back and, and Osher or, or May or somebody was, standing there you know waiting you kind of go ooh, but it was just sort of oh he's time for bed it's time for wookie bed <laughs> yeah well, it was a, a, quite an abrupt yeah. cut I, I would if say. i'd say that in the cinema like if i'd gone over those movie screenings and it just ended i would have gone oh is that it like that, that seems weird yeah you're right yeah um yeah. It's definitely not a movie ending. <laughs> no <laughs> a cliffhanger or like it's just not how i mean i know this is a longer story but and it won't yeah. matter when you get to the you know when eventually you can watch them all in a row. It won't matter. It just felt a bit sort of, especially since they've gone to the trouble to drop the two at the same time. Mm. You kind of felt like it would have, yeah. you know, like they dropped those two Andors and like Obi Wan particularly was a you know it was like the Anakin in the tank. It was like oh get ready yeah. you know. And the episode one finished, I think, with yeah, May on the rocks of the beach and seeing the dark side mm. user in the background or whatever so that was a boom yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of ending whereas this you know there was that episode of Andor that ended on him eating his beans you know by the the fire on Aldani so um, well, that's the, oh, I was hoping to look good inside for Andor. the, the Wookiee house the Wookiee hut. 53 minutes I want to see you know what's inside the kitchen what's cooking you know because he because it looks like it's a it's just a ship that's parked or an older ship or something, doesn't it? Because the junk chairs are like, hey, yeah, we're going to strip a- this thing for parts, sort of. So it seems like he's just sort of... Yeah, it's a ship crash landed and they've... Yeah, he's... Yeah, okay. So whether it's his ship, he's just he's just decided to stay there or whether he's, you know, hopefully it's got high enough ceilings and we're not bumping his head all the time. But you wonder what he's up to. Like, is he doing a, a Luke Skywalker on Acto thing where he's just... He was ashamed by something he did, so he's sort of hanging out by himself. Well, is it, a... is, is it this thing? or is it, I mean, they seem, to, they, they seem to know where he was pretty easily as well, though. But it, True. Maybe it's just kind of like, well, he's there. Again, we've got tons of Jedi. We don't really need to call on him. He's just doing his but thing. Maybe he's force. retired or something, you know? He's, yeah. Uh, and they have to... He's two days away from retirement. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's I'm just, too old for this shit. I'm too old, yeah. It's like, what did he say? He said he's too old for this shit. Oh, he's two days away from retirement. <laughs> he's got a hand in his badge and his gun. And he's, he, he did good. There was a good gun snapping there too. It was, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of where we left it. Like, I know we've probably missed, we've missed lots of bits in between. There was some great fighting. There was, choreography was great. The action was really good. The, great creatures. Creatures were great. Sets were great. Acting was great. 
uh, story. What about the new ships? Good. A lot of the ships I was quite impressed with. They are all different, but still Star Warsy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They all um, they didn't feel shiny. They felt okay. They'd been around for a bit, like well maintained, but you know that they'd been around. Uh, nice, you know, chunky, clunky buttons and levers. Oh, I love a lever and a button. Um, and yeah, everything just had the aesthetic um and even the the planet that i'm just going to say tobin that's not his name was it tobin uh um, it wasn't tommen T- it was tobin 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 yeah you know, it's a bit tobin. like my name it yeah. says here sorry sorry mr, mr. fake beard sorry to, inter- sorry to like interrupt it says he was a jedi master as well how old is this guy supposed to be <laughs> he looks like he's 18 and he's just stuck his pubes on his face like it's i don't understand well maybe he just it took him 10 years to grow a beard i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah anyway it's, and it's, that's the beard he grew i just it's so weird because the casting has been on point like really great brave brave casting pick perfect pick things for the characters um you know people complaining idiots complained on enough white guys you get a white guy and he just seems woefully <laughs> miscast so she's like that's why i'm not doing it because <laughs> that's what you get <laughs> It just what, seemed weird because the, there was the older, there was another Jedi, there was another older Jedi who was sort of the one at the door they were greeting. He looked like he yeah. was the right age. It could have yeah. been the other way around. Like I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure there's more to this. Again, there's more to it. We can't get stuck on Mr. Pube's face here. We've got to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I wouldn't say was a negative, but nothing about the score stood out to me. It, I thought the same thing. I it, didn't, there wasn't an I was waiting for something to kick in. There was no distinct hook. There was no hooks. Um because um, yeah. yeah, Mando had the woo doo woo and just so distinctive from the start. Andor was very different but distinctive. Yeah. Um I thought I heard some callbacks on that on the snowy planet. I thought I heard some callbacks to the Hoth um, hot scene. Might need to get Xanthi with the around the, someone around who the, has the deep understanding of the near music the pro droid uh, on Hoth. That kind of vibe. But apart from that, there wasn't. Yeah, I'm sure it'll kick in after you see you know three or four episodes. There'll, there'll be some sort of theme. But well, yeah, no force theme or anything like that. You know, where you go. Well, I guess that's one that could potentially carry over. Um, sort of the the Star Warsy theme, but. Um, yeah, look, I'd, any, anything else we need to, to put in here before we wrap this up? I, what a great start. I, I had high hopes for this. I didn't really know what to expect. I guess it feels... I guess it came... like I, I, I think I feel like in my head what I think it was going to be like, I feel like I got that, which I think was mystery, Jedi, good writing... All that's you know, a bit of intrigue and things like. I feel like that's what I got back. It didn't kind of give me this completely left field thing that I wasn't going to get. Um, and I think maybe f- because of like something like Russian Doll, um, maybe I was like, oh, maybe it'll be a little bit more snappy, zappy, dialogue-y kind of. But it felt Star Warsy. It, well, I didn't feel any sort of super p- personality being imposed on the show. If that makes sense. Happy birthday, baby. Yeah. <laughs> there was no sort of like Nia- Natasha Leone kind of like, hey, what's going on? You know, we're gonna, I'll be, bring her in episode five. Why not? I'll, if they, she can make it work. But it didn't It didn't feel like there was an overriding personality, overriding the Star Wars-iness of it. It just felt Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. So what yeah, happens next um, week, guys? I know some people mm-hmm. have seen episode three and four, but I don't think many people have seen it. No, those were like screeners sent to particular people. Um, who knows? Like, I, I like that we don't know. I mean, the sort of only guess we can make is that, okay, Soul and the crew go to the planet of the Wookiee Jedi. Um and but May's also on her way there. Yep. But again, these this could just <laughs> anything could happen. What about you, Turbo? Do you think that'll it'll play out sort of as obvious as that, or do you reckon we're going to get some left turns? 
I got nothing. I got I got no. I like, just don't want them to like, like just don't friggin get shot out of the sky and then crash and spend an episode having to get, you know what I mean? Like get to the destination. Yeah. Like don't give me any of that bull crap where you get sidetracked uh, I, I, for an episode. I don't and think a half. there's going to be any side quest episodes or anything, anything like that. I think it's going to keep moving at a rapid pace, but I've got no idea where we're going um, at all. Have I said that I was surprised that Vanestra seemed quite um, bogged down by, you know, the, the PR of it all, um, the the bureaucracy, like that sort of surprised me. I mean, obviously in the High Republic books, Vanestra is a teenager, but newly made Jedi Knight, but her sort of almost seemingly the one running the council and very much sticking to the, oh, you know, this doesn't look good for us if there's a next Jedi out there. She's like the company man, um, isn't she really? Yeah, 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 it's a bit surprising. Oh, to see, but maybe there's more to it than we think. Again, everything, mm. everything. I just, I just trust nothing, which is fantastic. Which is like, I don't know yep. where this is going to go. And this was the beauty when we came into this. Is like, we don't know who lives, we don't know who dies, we don't know anything about this time period. But you don't have to go. Oh well, we know X shows up in the movie afterwards, so that they're fine. Like you, you can just, you can do anything you can burn it to the ground maybe the jedi temple the one we see in the prequels is enough they've just rebuilt it because this one burns to the ground we don't know like it's everything's on on, on the table so it's exciting the, the one thing that has always come up about is the the sith returning so there's going to have to be a cover-up or something so there's going to be a case where they discover this new threat or the sith and they're basically everyone that finds out about the sith is any, every Jedi is, is dead or hasn't hasn't uncovered or, or communicated that to the rest of the Jedi Council at all. At all. Yeah. So yeah. there's got to be some sort of cover up, I reckon, somewhere. I've you know I've got a feeling, and I don't know this for sure, that that shot in the trailer where that sort of like the red lightsaber, and I, I feel that might still be a misdirect. Like I feel like that that might still be something that's making you think one thing that's not actually going to happen or going to play out in a different way, because I just feel like it's just too obvious. Yeah. It's just too obvious at the moment, and I don't. I'm just. I'm. I'm. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but mm. I like that it's making me overthink it. I'm happy to overthink. It. I just don't think it's going to play out as simply as that. Now I haven't got a frame by frame memory of the trailers, but I think we've seen a lot of what we saw in the trailers. Not everything, but a lot of things. Yep. I'd say probably, uh, I want to say 80%. But I haven't watched any of the TV spots. Um, no. But I think we're pretty close to seeing, we've seen a lot of it. So, um, yeah, look, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there. We hit the hour. You know, we'd like to keep things tight around here. Everybody <laughs> has to get get their Wookiee time, Wookie bedtime in here. But it's... Um, we'll Did you press record, Joss? I did, yeah. For those who who, who are following along at home, I didn't press record last week, or oh, two weeks ago when Matt Turbo was on, but I did do the backup, so the backup did did work. So <laughs> I won't make that mistake again. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for 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 ch- tuning in and um, you know downloading, leave us, give us a sweet five star review as they say, and share it around. And yeah, we'll be here every week doing this. Everybody's welcome every week when they can do it if we can keep these viewing habits up we'll hopefully we'll get matt mole and andy bell and as well if we get a group of four in man that'd be awesome so if we can i think we can do four on this i'll have to check what the what the plan can do but we'll we'll bring people in and out as they can as the as they're available to do it um turbo you know always a pleasure to see you mate anytime when i can make it i'll, I'll be here and uh catherine just as to put a time step on this i'll see you tomorrow at the at hamer hall for Return of the Jedi with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra with my parents and my daughter. You're coming along. You're, you're getting a Chapman family uh, outing to go see Return of the Jedi. Catherine very generously hooked us up with some free tickets. So um, that's going to be great fun. That's Olive's first time seeing Return of the Jedi tomorrow night. So it's going to be good. Her, her viewing order is – I put this on Twitter. Her viewing order for seeing the Star Wars movies is Half of Force Awakens, A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, the Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and now it's going to be Return of the Jedi. <laughs> so she's the olive. The olive order is all over the shop, but she's um, the true machete order. It's yeah. the true machete <laughs> order. So she's um, just chopping it up. <laughs> yeah, 
but she's enjoying it so she's pretty pumped so um yeah so i'll see you tomorrow Catherine. thank you thank you and pip will live forever <laughs> don't jinx it thanks everybody <laughs> see you soon bye bye later <laughs> Bye.